Now, the list of countries banning travel to and from the UK continues to grow. Uh, so what are your rights if you are caught up in the disruption? Nina can help you. Yeah, lots of us over the weekend worrying about changing our plans, going to see family in the UK. But of course, for people planning to see relatives abroad mm. or even people who are abroad hoping to come back to the UK, things are rapidly changing. Yeah, this was already a really busy and difficult time for people leaving the country or coming back. And it's just got a lot more complicated. Dover is closed and there are limits on travel to Ireland, Italy, Belgium, the Netherlands. As Louise was saying, the list is growing. Apart from the obvious emotional roller coaster for those hoping to travel and see their loved ones, there are the financial implications which can be just as worrying. Uh, Rory Boland is the travel editor at Witch and joins us from East London this morning. Good to see you. Thanks for coming on, Rory. Um, two elements here to travel that's cancelled, where you're told you're not allowed to travel and when the travel itself is cancelled. What are your rights in those two different areas? So for those people who were due to travel to Ireland, to France, um, most of the European Union probably by the end of the day, where the borders have been closed, your flight, your ferry, your Eurostar will be cancelled. Uh, and in those circumstances, you'll be able to get a refund. If it's a flight, your, your refund is due within seven days. If it's a package holiday, that's within 14 days. It, it, it's fair to say you may wait a little bit longer because of the, the number of cancellations that will now be coming through but hopefully we won't uh, see the experiences that many customers had back in March and April where they waited a long time. It should be fairly straightforward if, if you're in that boat. I know that doesn't make up for the, the emotional turmoil, but hopefully you won't be in a fight for a refund. I should say for those people who are in France or Ireland hoping to come home, um, you should still be able to travel in most cases. It, it depends which country you're in. Uh, so some countries have banned travel just from the UK. So that includes Ireland, uh, that includes Ireland and France. The ferries coming back here are still going. The Eurostar from Paris is still going. It is slightly different from Belgium, to pick one example. So it has banned travel both ways. Um, and, and that does leave some people at the risk of being stranded. M my advice to those people would be really essential that you don't cancel, particularly with flights. The, the airline has a responsibility to look after you and get you home. And um, if you do cancel or you accept a refund while you're abroad, you, you end that responsibility effectively. So th the best thing to do today is, is to wait until the, the European Union meeting a little bit later on. And, and then we should know how long these bans will last, because at, at the moment they're just interim 48 hour bans. It, it may be that those are extended or it may be that the European Union comes up with a, a kind of testing solution and um, but really really crucial that you don't cancel yourself because you, you do then surrender your rights and just to be clear uh, if people cannot get back from abroad it becomes then the duty the responsibility of the government to bring them home yes and no um, it, the, the government was not particularly helpful last time around when there were lots of people stranded all over the world back in March and April is, is the fair assessment. Many people waited months. That being said, we're not in that situation just yet. Um, you know, it, it, there is still some transport going, particularly from France and Ireland, which is really key because that allows you to get back by car and, and use ferries. I think what we're likely to see over the next couple of days is that airline routes may st they may stop and um, so even though airlines can fly back into the uk if they're not taking people out it's unlikely that those will continue forever so stay in touch with your airline if you're offered the ability to come back a little bit earlier i would take them up on that many people will have booked under flexible booking conditions anyway and um, so you may be able to pop on to the the airline website and move your booking a little bit earlier um, at the moment if you can do that and you're not going to pay a huge fee it's probably a good idea also just to get yourself back as, as quickly as you can. And just one last question. So that's for things that are cancelled. People are entitled to their money back. And aside from that, if you're travelling to Tier 4 and it's advised to not travel there or you've been advised not to travel from Tier 4, but that isn't fully cancelled, where do you stand then? You want to do the right thing, but you're not necessarily going to get your cash back. 
No, m more complicated um, potentially with, with the tier fours and, and the different tiers in England. So uh, the advice from which is if you're in tier four or if you're in Scotland or Wales, it's a little bit unclear in Northern Ireland this morning, it may be clearer later on, you should be given a cash refund. That's what the competition regulators have said um, as recently as last week. What you're going to find is different airlines, different providers have different approaches. So EasyJet and TUI are issuing refunds, Ryanair and and British Airways, Virgin Atlantic, I, I could carry on listing for a while, unfortunately, are only offering vouchers and rebooking. Uh, unfortunately, if you rebook, that can be more expensive because you have to pay for the new dates and, and vouchers come with, with often strings attached that are unhelpful. So what I would say is if you do want a cash refund and the operator is refusing, I would make it clear to them in an email, ideally. I know it's not always easy to find an email for an airline, but you need written proof that, you know, really you believe you are due a cash okay. refund. So even if you are then bounced into a voucher, hopefully later on when the competition regulator intervenes, you okay. will be able to get your money back. All right, Rory Boland from which some sound advice there. And as ever, if you've been caught up in this disruption, if you've got any questions at all, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Get in touch in all the usual ways. This story is clearly developing the Prime Minister and the EU leadership holding crisis meetings later today. Um, we will continue talking about it throughout the morning here on... Oh, thank you very much <laughs> thank you. Ten past eight. Uh, should we get more now on that uh, travel ban on lorries and passengers by a growing list of countries, including France? It all seems to be changing by the minute and there are big meetings going on in Paris with the French government and with the UK government in London as well. Uh, we can speak now to Alex Veach, who's from Logistics UK, and to Ian Wright, the chief executive of the Food and Drink Federation. Thank you both. Uh, Alex, let's start with you if we can. How serious is this situation in terms of the ban on lorries going to and from France? It is a serious situation. Uh, we need two things right now. The first is we need our government to take care of the people, of the drivers who are caught up in these delays. And we also need our government to work with their EU partners to uh, come up with a pragmatic, sensible solution to give the French authorities and other authorities confidence that drivers are COVID free and thus can be allowed to travel through the borders once again. But can I just be really clear with everybody? This is affecting outbound uh, freight movements where there is a driver in a truck. It does not affect inbound freight, which means goods are still moving inbound. It also does not affect what we call unaccompanied freight, which is where you get stuff, you put it in a box and you put it on a ship, no driver. That stuff is moving fine. So this is why we're saying at the current time, please, no need to panic buy. Uh, there are goods uh, they're available in the shops, retailers doing everything they can. But at the same time, it is serious and we do need a resolution as quickly as possible. Well, let's talk to um, Ian Wright, who's chief executive of the Food and Drink Federation. Um, Alex giving that message, no need to panic buy. Are supplies guaranteed? Well, I agree with every word Alex said. So let's be clear, there is no need to panic. Um, there is a concern about food supplies in the longer term. And the problem here, and I'm sure Alex can explain this much more succinctly than I can, the problem is the return journey of uh, drivers coming to the UK. If they cannot be guaranteed, either that they will get out of the UK because of the congestion, or that they will be able to secure a return journey full of uh, whatever product it is, that's gonna make it much more unlikely for them to come in the first place. And over time, because the transport system requires these round trips, that will reduce the ability of us to bring food into the country after Christmas, if that takes effect. So what Alex said is absolutely right. We need a pragmatic solution that gets drivers across the border into the UK by whatever route in exactly the same way that we had throughout the lockdown in March uh, and in the earlier part of the year. There was no uh, no material impact on supply, and that was because all sides were pragmatic in that regard. Oh, can you give me um, in on that? Um, so, to basically, you're saying to avoid long-term problems, we need a solution. But when can you give me a time frame on that? Well, if you think what we're really talking about here is is mostly fresh food, which is affected. Uh, immediately, then most of the fresh food that we would want over the next week is already either in the country, in the distribution centres, on the shelves, or even on its way, and that is continuing to move. 
it's over time. So we're thinking about that this time next week and beyond, probably even later, you know, 10 days, 15 days, and then into the new year. And that is a big concern because at that point, uh, those uh, difficulties that we're talking about today start to come in, start to back into the new checks that will be will have to be used on all product coming into the UK from anywhere in the, in the EU because we will have left the transition period. And so there will be customs checks, uh, sanitary checks, animal health checks, a whole rat and driver checks, a whole range of checks come into place at 2301 on the 31st. So those together with this disruption could be very difficult for us. We're just seeing here, these are live pictures from our team in Dover. You can see a car reversing. Uh, the guy in yellow is telling cars, and we've seen quite a lot of lorries coming in and turning up this morning, uh, thinking they're going to be able to get to France, but being turned around, you can see another U-turn there as, as a car goes back on its way. And uh, we've seen some rather confused scenes where, where the message hasn't yet got through to drivers that they just can't travel. Alex, you were talking about the lorry drivers who are potentially going to be stuck at Dover, unable to get on ferries. What do you think needs to change? What needs to happen to reassure the authorities on the other side of the channel that those guys are safe and that they should be able to continue? Well, the silver lining in this uh, very substantial cloud is that uh, we now have uh, um, measures and tools available that were not here in the first wave of the pandemic. And as Ian rightly says, there were no material disruptions that prevented uh, shelves being stocked, even in April and May, when we didn't really understand how the virus was transmitted. Now we have testing. And so we are encouraging um, our government to look seriously at introducing rapid testing for drivers or, or perhaps other measures uh, that would give the French and other uh, EU countries confidence that drivers are COVID free and thus should be allowed to travel across to the EU. So those tools are with us now um, and we do believe that they should be rolled out as quickly and urgently as possible to get us over this hump and back to a normal flow of freight. And Alex, on a practical human level, these guys, these lorry drivers, are stuck in their cabs right now. I mean, just in terms of the practicalities of, you know, where they go to the loo and how they keep yeah. clean and safe. Just talk, what, what are you thinking about there? Well, we're very worried about that. And uh, we are calling on government again to provide uh, for the well-being and health and safety of drivers who are unfortunately caught up in this. Um, I understand from the media that the Manston Airport site which is a very large uh, disused air, airfield uh, put in as a contingency measure to manage uh, potential uh, uh, delays for after EU exit. Uh, we understand that's going to be stood up and used as a lorry park. That is um, an absolute necessity because that will provide um, hard standing areas where the trucks can stay, where the drivers can be safe to get out of the cab, get uh, refreshments, use the toilet. Uh, that does need to happen right now because the health and safety of the drivers really is a top priority and is something that our UK government can and must act on uh, now. Oh, well, listen, both. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Alex Veitch and uh, Ian Wright.